Hey guys, uh, so I'm starting this series related to Springboard interview questions. So what I will try to do in one video, we will cover the questions related to one particular concept. Like in this first video, we will discuss about these three questions which are related to environment variables. And in the coming videos also, uh, we will pick up one concept, uh, understand the concept in the code and then, uh, you know, discuss the answers. So this series will really helpful for students or freshers or working professionals who want to revise the Spring Boot concepts or learn the concepts, uh, prepare for interview, right? So let's jump into these three questions. So the first one is relaxed binding. Second one is uh, which one is better properties or YAML and third one is uh, related to Spring profiles. So let me share the code example here. And I, what I did is I just downloaded the project from uh, spring.io. The people who are new to Spring Boot, they can go to this website, uh, select Maven, Java version, and there they can add dependencies. So let's jump into code. So here, what I have done is I have created one database config file and I have used this configuration annotation. And inside this, I have used this value annotation to fetch these values from the properties file. So if you see, I have like db dot server name, and then I have db dot username. Then I have db dot server password, right? So these four properties, and then getters and setters. Yeah. So basically, what will happen is value annotation will try to find this property in the properties file and in the resource folder, and will give the value at uh, runtime, right? So if I go to the actual code, uh, I have one URL here, database config, and here if you will see, we are fetching all the four properties with the help of getter method so basically what it will do it will get the value from this class and this class will fetch the value from properties file okay so we have here in the properties file if you see db dot server name username server password server code so if i will run this code right so you will see like it's working fine so the flow is like when the starting point will be we will hit this url this URL will go to the getter method of database config and getter method will fetch the value of this, which is coming from our application default dot properties, this value. So if I go to localhost and you will see we are getting server, we are getting username, password. So if you have noticed like the name of this property here, right, is not matching exactly with this properties mentioned in the properties file, right, because of the relaxed binding concept. So what Spring Boot does is for each of the property mentioned here, right? For example, server name. So it will try to find server name in the four cases. So first one is like, so this one is camel case, right? And then server name, it is in the kebab case. And then server underscore name, which is snake case. And then all caps, but snake case, server name. So if you see here also I have mentioned server name in camel case, username in kebab case, server password in snake case and server port in caps, right? So what Spring Boot will do at runtime is it will try to find the property, right? Which is mentioned in this value annotation in these four cases. So which is known as relaxed binding concept. So if interviewer will ask you, you can explain it like it works for these four cases camel kebab snake and caps case right and you can describe the flow which we discussed now so this is about relaxed binding and the, our second question was if you see which is better properties or yaml so if you see here by default spring boot works with properties file and in the properties file we are uh, giving the properties like this but if you see we have like a lot of repetition in this right like db dot is repeating because there is no hierarchy right db dot is repeating and in case let's say we have other properties uh, user dot service dot url right something value right so if you see the repetition keeps up on increasing right i have to give this text so many times like based on number of uh, properties that service have and then maybe user dot then other property can be there right so if you see the repetition keeps on increasing and code readability is not that great here in my opinion uh, but if i go to the yaml file which i created so i just clicked on resources right click new file and application yaml so what i did here is if you see it's a yaml file so it's a markup language so in this you can describe the hierarchy of the uh, properties so it's more readable right so whenever i so as soon as i see this file 
I know like these properties belong to DB, these properties belong to servers. And these are the two ways in which you can also maintain the list, right? So servers is a list and it have two uh, values. And this is also like a list of array, right? Uh, so these are the ways you can use and it is a markup language. So it have like a lot of benefits. So I will not go into detail like all the benefits of YAML because our interview portion is basically uh, between properties versus YAML. So you can say to interviewer like YAML, you prefer YAML because of the human readability and the less repetition of the code. And the best part is it offers hierarchy, which is like human readable and it is less error prone, right? So all that answers you can give to interviewer. So I will just remove. So what I will do here is, and if you want to impress interviewer more, right? So you can also say like application.yaml is not like by default activated in Spring Boot. So if I have to read from this right application YAML, so I have to use here additional tag here. So let's say I have to use enable configuration properties and then I have to use this in the main file. If you see here, we have to use property source and class path I have give, given giving like, please fetch the values from this file, right? So if I will go to this file, it is YAML, right? So I will change to YAML TB. So we know like it's getting fetched from here. So now if I will run this code, right? So you will see it should pick up from the YAML file. So it's running. So once it's, this is just like, if you will give this answer like in detail, right? Instead of just explaining about readability and hierarchy, you will really put a very good impression on the interview. So if I will go here and if I will run this, we missed some one tag. So if you see, it's still not picking from the YAML file, right? So if I go hit here, database config. So I think we have to here give configuration properties. Okay. So now if I will run this, so hopefully it should run now. So we have added like enable configuration properties and then configuration properties here. And if I will go there now, so if you will see it is coming from the YAML DB. So you can give this answer to interviewer, like we have to add these properties. And then in the main file, you have to add this property source to pick from application.yml. So this is about this second question. So let's see the third one, right? Why do we need spring profiles? So if you see here, right, I have like three application.properties file, right? So basically these are because your properties will differ in your local or dev environment and then test environment and then production, right? So that's why Spring offers you the uh, profiling concept. So you can have different properties file and inside each property, you can have the values based on that environment, right? Let me run this code so it will be more clear to you guys. So what I will do, I will just remove the tags here or I will just co comment it. So we will use the properties file in this case. So I will let me comment and then in the main file, so I will comment this line, right? So it will start picking up from application default. So if you see, if we like without any profile, right? It is always picking up from the application default properties. And then now let's try to pass the profile as prod. So we will able to validate if it's picking up from the prod file. So I will go here and I will use command to pass the profiles is equal to prod here. Okay, so springboot.run.profile. So this can be set up in your Jenkins or whenever your code is deploying in any of the uh, platform. So if I will run this now, so you will be able to see like instead of default DB, the prod DB should start coming when we hit that URL. So it's running fine now. So I will go here. So you see the prod DB is coming. So what happened here is like we gave it profile as prod. So Spring Boot searched for application hyphen profile name, which is prod and it picked up these properties, right? So this is how Spring profiling works. And also in your project, you would have seen like there is also like application dot properties file, right? So what happened in this case is like how Spring Boot works is, uh, for example, let's say from these properties, I will copy this. So based on the profile, it actually create application dot properties file, okay, in the background. So what I will do, let's say application dot prod. So I will, I will just put one property here from here to properties here, right? And I will give it as let's say 9090, right? So what will happen now is when, as soon as I gave prod, right? Profile. So it will up, append these four properties or let's say, 
so for example so i will mention this property in the prod also so that it, the scenario will be clear so now what will happen like these all four properties will be copied in this one and if you see this property is duplicated right so it will fetch the value which is present in the application pro so it will override this value right so let's see if it works now so that because that means the default value is 8080 but if in case any of these properties file based on the profile is having any value it will override the value and pick up the value from that file so i think it's getting confusing so let's run the code so in this case we have 9090 here so i will change it to 8080 and we have 9090 here okay so what should happen now is so as soon as we hit the code right it should pick up 8080 it should not pick up a 9090 okay now let's run the code again so if you see here so in the application prod properties our port number is 8080 right so if i will hit this it's coming 8080 right so now if i will call the test one so i will remove this and in the test one i will remove this one right for example i remove there is no port number in our test so what will happen is it should pick up 9090 so now if i will pass the test profile right so you will see that the port number is coming from server port and 9090 so if i will go here so you see test db is coming and port number is coming 9090 so that's how it works so it's not mandatory to have application dot properties but in case you want like some of the properties you want to mention by default here right and in case if it's mentioned in any of the profile property then it will value will get overridden so this is what you can explain to interviewer if uh, the interviewer will ask for spring profiling so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content